My thanks and appreciation for the kind uh, invitation to this very, very important uh, event to mark the 75th anniversary of the Hiroshima uh, horror that befell the people of that city. And I don't know how many uh, on this Zoom chat uh, today listen to the testimony of a survivor on this morning's Radio 4 Today programme, but it was exceptionally moving and very much evoked a sense of the pain and the horror and the shock uh, that she experienced as a young person. Uh, she was at school, she was with her uh, close friend in a classroom and she noted the aeroplane come in and then the rest um, has been uh, in a very devastating effect captured in our uh, historical testimonies and footage of what befell the people of Hiroshima. So today we are here and I am pleased to be joining all of you to mark this very important uh, occasion. Uh, 75 years having passed of uh, the horror, the devastation and the destruction that was done to the people of Hiroshima on the 6th of August 1945 and it lives on. The, uh, despite the fact that thousands died instantly that day and many thousands more died subsequently from their injuries and the effects of radiation, uh, more than 210,000 people, albeit we will never really know the true human costs suffered by the people of Hiroshima and repeated three days as we know later in Nagasaki. And we honor and remember them all today. And it's really important that we remember them as part of our uh, remembering of history, but also as a cautionary uh, testimony to warn us of the uh, threat that nuclear uh, warfare and the nuclear uh, industry poses to global uh, humanity and it absolutely forces us rightly and justly to be part of a global movement that is absolutely vital and necessary to ensure that what happened those 75 years ago in Hiroshima and Nagasaki never happen again. Sadly, however, as you all know, uh, the call for nuclear disarmament is as desperately needed today as it ever has been in a world full of tension and instability. Uh, we know that you know, the United States and Russia have withdrawn from the arms control agreements in recent years, and we are really now uh, approaching a dangerous precipice. I know that the calculation is that we're some 100 seconds away from a nuclear disaster uh, in terms of that clock that has been established to keep us on our toes. But it appears that despite the efforts and in the endeavors of the global peace movement and campaigners, uh, including many of us involved in CND, either here in the UK or internationally, are falling on deaf ears when it comes to those uh, powers, global powers, that have the real power to be able to mitigate against the risk of nu uh, nuclear uh, impact on humanity. And at a time when the people of the world are already dealing with the devastating impact and the social and economic uncertainty that uh, has befallen us as a consequence of uh, a natural catastrophe, climate emergency, COVID-19, we are allowing ourselves, well, we aren't, but we are needing to stop the man-made catastrophe. And that's why uh, I am proud to be with all of you here today and proud to be um, joining you in taking a stand uh, that says very clearly and loudly that we will continue to rally together as a global commun community, as a movement uh, that requires us to also ensure that we start at the local. And that's what we're doing here in Newham, as was alluded to, 
you know, I'm really pleased that we've been in opposition to the arms fair that takes place every two years, and I'm hopeful that the next planned one won't happen. Uh, but also pleased at uh, our last full virtual council last month in July, we passed a mo mo motion which declared our support for the 2017 United Nations Treaty on the Prohibition prohibitation of nuclear weapons and calling on the UK government to work for global denuclearization. Inevitably, I've already got some calls from local residents, you know, why are you promoting this when, you know, there are more pressing issues locally. And my argument is that it's absolutely necessary that we link the local with the international, that our stand against nuclear proliferation is equally important for the people of Newham because of the, you know, uh, seismic uh, challenge and threat that it poses. And I'm also pleased that following the adoption and passing of the motion, I'm going to be uh, affiliating to the Mayors for Peace uh, network and I will be joining uh, as a representative of uh, Newham, the global community of over 7,000 uh, 900 cities across 164 countries and regions around the world uh, and we will be playing our part in uh, ensuring that we not only remember all victims of nuclear weapons and the devastation that it causes but we also play our role and add our voice to the call to ensure that the threat of nuclear ends and uh, stops uh, the anxiety and the threat that it poses to humanity and creating a focus of remembrance here in Newham as I am doing today and in future years is a symbol of our determination and the vision of Mears for 